Hi, I'm the History Guy. I have a degree in history. I love history. If you love history too, this is the channel for you. Over 800,000 women enlisted in the Soviet Armed Forces in the Second World War, a war that Russia still calls the Great Patriotic War. And while they are heroes there, the exploits of those women are relatively unknown here in the United States. But that's why we have the History Guide to remind us of people that we really should remember. And if you have never heard of the famed Night Witches of the Soviet Union, you really should, because they were fierce. It all started with one extraordinary personality, Marina Roskova. The first female navigator in the Soviet Air Force, she set several long-distance flying records in the 1930s. When she and her crew set the international women's record for straight-line long-distance flight in 1938, they were recognized with the Hero of the Soviet Union Award, the first women so recognized, and the only ones prior to the Second World War. Russia tended to be more open to women in the military than a number of nations were, and in the First World War, they had fielded one of the very first all-female combat units. And the situation was dire in the Great Patriotic War, where over 800,000 women signed up for the Soviet Armed Forces. But the Soviet Air Force was still unsold on the idea of women combat pilots, and while there was no official restriction, they tend to set up administrative burdens that made it impossible for a woman to get a combat pilot commission. But Marina Roskova was a hero of the Soviet Union, and she personally knew Stalin, and she was able to leverage that relationship to get Stalin to authorize the creation of an all-female flying corps. The corps included three regiments, and Roskova herself died in an accident, leading one of those regiments. All three saw distinguished service, but only one would remain all-female throughout the entire war, and earned a special reputation worth noticing the 588th Night Bomber Regiment, the Night Witches of the Soviet Union. Night bombing in the Second World War tended to be a high-tech affair, using the latest aircraft and the newest navigational techniques and technology in order to navigate through the darkness. Not so much the 544th. The 544th were equipped with this 1928 biplane, the Polikarpov, PO2. The PO2 was a slow, steady two-seat design, mostly used for training. And because it was produced in an agricultural variant, it had the less than complimentary nickname Kukuruznik, or crop duster. It was easy to fly, but it was very slow, carried a very small bomb load, and it was very fragile. A hit from one tracer round could easily set the whole plane on fire. But the Kukuruznik did have its strengths. It could, for example, take off and land with a very short runway. It didn't require a paved airstrip at all, just a good flat field. It could fly steady at very low altitudes, and because it was so slow, it could actually turn on a dime. And its top speed was slower than the stall speed of most German pursuit fighters, which actually made it very difficult for them to target. It would have been suicide flying a plane like that during the day. It would have been easy for anti-aircraft guns to shoot down. But at night, flying at treetop level, it was extremely difficult to target. And its engine made a, a peculiar noise, which the Germans likened to a sewing machine, which was described as nerve-wracking. But more terrifying was the way the plane was used in the bombing attack. The pilot would gear up and go to a high altitude, and then cut the engine and glide over the target as they dropped their bombs. With no engine noise, it was extremely difficult to target and shoot at the aircraft. But even worse, really, was the eerie whistling noise that went through the wings as the plane was dropping its bombs, which the Germans thought sounded like witches flying on their brooms, and thus the Germans gave them the nickname Night Witches, a nickname that they eagerly embraced. One downside, though, flying at low altitudes like that made parachutes worthless, and so they didn't even carry them. The 544th started flying in June of 1942 under the command of Yevdokia Bershinskaya. 
The regiment flew harassment and precision bombing missions. And because the planes carried such a small bomb load, the way that they would do it is that they would sneak up to a field close to the enemy lines at dusk with all their support vehicles. They didn't fly in any kind of formation, they just took off at regular intervals, flew a few miles across the lines to where the Germans were, dropped their bombs, and then returned back to the airfield to reload. And they would continue doing that until dawn, when they would fly back to their base. There were no radios in the aircraft, so they had no communication while they were flying. Early in the war, there was a fear that the battlefield moved so quickly, the Germans were advancing so fast, that they never knew when they took off if, by the time it came to land, that their runway would still be behind their own lines. When it was too muddy and their planes would sink in the mud, they would just go rip up nearby fences, lay the fence post down in a line, and use that as their runway. They would fly sometimes as many as eight or more missions in a single night. It was an extremely dangerous way to fly, and most of them would suffer through multiple crashes or injuries during their career. At its height, the regiment had 40 two-women air crews, and it was truly an all-women regiment. All of the ground and support crews, all of the command, every person in the regiment was a woman. By February of 1943, the 544th had distinguished itself enough to be retitled as an elite Guards Unit, the 46th Guards Night Bomber Aviation Regiment. The Night Witches certainly proved an important point, that women pilots could be just as effective in combat as men. At the end of the war, the 46th had flown over 24,000 missions and dropped 23,000 tons of bombs. Every pilot in the regiment had flown more than 800 combat missions by the end of the war. It was the most highly decorated all-female unit in the Soviet Air Force, with 23 members winning the award Hero of the Soviet Union. 30 women of the regiment lost their lives during the war. They were used quite a lot in Soviet propaganda during the war, and they're still well remembered in Russia today, but it's hard to say if the Night Witches really changed culture. For example, the Russian military today thinks that it is too stressful for women to be combat pilots, and there are no women serving as pilots in the Russian armed forces today. The United States didn't start allowing women to be combat pilots until 1993, and they still represent a fairly small percentage of our trained combat pilots. And it wasn't until just last year, 2016, that the United States opened all combat roles in the military to availability to women. I guess the wheel of culture turns slowly, but isn't that all the more reason that we should remember the heroism of the Night Witches of the Soviet Union? I'm the History Guy. I hope you enjoyed this edition of my channel, Five Minutes of History, short snippets of forgotten history, five to ten minutes long. If you enjoyed this, then please click the like button there on your left. If you have any questions or comments, then write them in the comment section, and I would be happy to respond. And if you want to get five minutes more Forgotten History, then click the button on your right to subscribe.